Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been rather busy around here so I haven't had a chance to make as many videos as I would have liked but I did come up with a concept for this video because I actually had a circuit that required a 24 volt input or had a 24 volt input and needed a 12 volt output. I didn't want to use the old standby 78 series regulators because they're terribly inefficient and there's just you know, a lot of heat that has to be dissipated on that big collector plate. Unfortunately, I couldn't use a standard buck converter because I didn't have room for an inverter. It's a very, very small confined space that I had to put the buck converter into. But I remembered that a couple of years ago I had another system that I was working on and I had purchased some converters that were essentially a drop-in replacement for the 7805 and 7812s. And those are these little recom converters and this is actually a complete buck converter in one little package, inductor and all, and this fit perfectly into the circuit that I was trying to to work on fit perfectly into the circuit case. So it was an ex excellent substitute. Well, the efficiency of this is a lot higher than you would get out of this on, on any day, but I thought, well, let's see how good they actually are. And the only thing that I did to change the circuit up was actually solder some leads on to make it easier to fit into a breadboard. Otherwise, it fits into any breadboard or any board once you modify it. The pitch is a little bit wider on, on the pins. But it's a drop-in replacement with just, you know, very little modification. It actually needs fewer components than a 7805. There's no input capacitor or output capacitor required on, on these. Now, Recom isn't the only company that makes these little regulators, but they're the ones that I have, and so I thought I would test them out. And what we'll do is actually put a voltage in of some value and since these are 7805s that I have to test I'll put in a voltage that's at least double maybe triple the value of the actual 7805 or the 5 volt. I'll run it to about 15 volts in and we'll see what current is required to keep a constant 5 volts out what the current would be at that point. So we would have what 5 volts divided by 100 ohms and that should give us the current out. But we'll measure that and then we'll calculate the power out and we'll do that over a couple of ranges and then substitute the 78E5 into the circuit and do the same measurements. I think before we get to the data sheets on the 7805 and the 78 E5, we should go over the theory a little bit on the linear regulator. It might be a while since we've talked about that. And I have done a series of videos on the linear regulators, and you can look at those, and I'll try to link those in below. And of course, the buck converter, we just completed that one recently, so this should be fairly familiar to you, but I'll also put a link down below so you can take a look at that. One of the problems with linear regulators is that there has to be a voltage drop on a pass element that's in the circuit. If we have 24 volts at our input and 12 volts at our output, the difference voltage between those two points has to be dropped on our pass element. So 12 and 12 gives us the 24 total. The way the circuit will actually function is a reference voltage is generated and we also have a feedback voltage from the output connected to this error amp and the error amp will adjust this pass element which is essentially a transistor. This transistor is going to have to carry all of the output current plus some of the current that's actually being fed through the system. Not necessarily all of it but a portion of it. So if I have 100 milliamps at the output, I have 1.2 watts, that 100 milliamps has to go through the pass element also, which means that there's also 1.2 watts that's dropped here and it is just wasted energy. It isn't sent to the output. 
and it's going to be a little bit higher because it's going to take some current to run the actual circuit. So this current is going to be higher. So right now we're looking at optimally a 50% a efficiency, which is not particularly good. So we're going to generate a lot of heat. On the buck converter, we'll actually switch on a transistor, in this case Q1, and it's only going to be switched on for a period of time sufficient to make sure that the voltage out remains constant. Of course, there's feedback elements that are coming from our output back to the, uh, the pass transistor, or this uh, pulse width modulated transistor. So it doesn't have to run all the time. It only has to run to maintain the voltage out. If the load is low, the circuit has to run a lot less. And we also have the inductor, which is going to store energy, and this will actually give us a current boost over what we could normally expect because the magnetic field, when this collapses, it's going to put current back into the circuit and give us a little bit of a boost for the current at the output. So we have a choice between a circuit that has to run continuously and drop a substantial voltage, or one that only has to run for a short period of time sufficient to make sure that V out stays constant with a varying load. So with that, let's go take a look at the data sheets for the two devices. Here are the PDFs for the two circuits. You can see the 78 series on one side and the 78Es, the pulse width modulated circuits from Recom on the other side. Both of these are capable of running a one amp current and you can tell that on the Recom data sheet because the way it reads is it's a 78E series so that means it's a positive regulator and you notice there's no voltage here but then there's a dash 1.0 whatever the voltage is would be for example if it was a 5 volt it would be 78E 5.0 and the dash 1.0 tells you the current that the device can handle you can get these in either isolated or non-isolated topologies and in this circuit, of course, the 78 series, you're stuck with, well, it's not isolated. Everything is connected directly. So off the bat, both of these are 1 amp circuits. The dropout voltage for the 78 series is a little bit better. The voltage that, when you get below that, it no longer regulates properly. If we go down to the RO, you can see that it's all 2 volts across this list from 5 volts to 15 volts. So as long as I maintain a voltage 2 volts greater than the regulated value, the output should stay at the, whatever we want that regulated value to stay at. So for 5 volts, it would be a 7 volt input required. It's 2 volts across the, across the range. 78E series has a higher dropout. It needs more voltage to maintain that steady output. So a 3.3 device here would need 7 volts minimum, so that's 3.7 volts greater, and the 78E5, the ones we're going to be using, needs at least 8 volts at the input to maintain 5 volts at the output with, without the potential of a dropout. The biggest advantage is right here. You look at the efficiency. 91% efficiency is typical on the R78E5, and that's just not going to be possible on a linear regulator because any voltage difference between the input and the output has to be dropped along that series pass device and is going to be wasted energy. Because this is switching on and off, we don't have to worry about a series pass drop. The advantage for Ripple goes to the 7805 or the 78 series because there is no switching in here and it also has the advantage that it can dissipate some of the ripple between input and output because of its internal circuitry. So if we had, for example, 5 millivolts of ripple coming in or 100 millivolts of ripple coming in, by the time it got to the output it would be on the, probably on the single you know, millivolt range, you know, depending on the circuit, of course. On the other hand, because this is a pulse switching circuit, we are going to get ripple from the switching of the circuit and the typical value or the maximum value that they say we should get is 120 millivolts peak to peak and that should be at about 330 kilohertz because that's the switching frequency of the device. Uh, the accuracies are relatively similar so we're looking at plus or minus 3 percent typical 5 percent maximum whereas the 
7805 is going to have an accuracy of about 4%. So it's a little bit less, but it's not very, very substantial. So 4% of the 5 volts gives us 200 millivolts, so that'll give us a voltage between 4.8 and 5.2. So slight advantage to, to this because the feedback network is better and it's more capable of controlling any variations that might occur with changes in the load and changes in the input voltage. Line regulation and load regulation are pretty much a wash once again. For the 5 volt device, it's 3 volts or 3 millivolts to 50 maximum. So if we're looking at the maximum, it's about it's 1%. And for the line regulation on our recom, you can see that it's it's also about 1%. The load regulation where we have changes in the actual demand of the current at the output is also going to be about 1% here and we're looking at about 1.5% on our our recom and that's the maximum. So unless you have a circuit that can't tolerate any kind of ripple the the recom is definitely the way to go as far as efficiency. So it has a greater efficiency but more ripple and the 7805 is far less efficient but it pretty much has no ripple at the output at all. With all of that covered let's run some current through both of these components and see how they compare. This is probably the simplest circuit we've covered on the channel. It's just a straight 7805 regulator. I do have a capacitor that is recommended from the data sheet if the leads are too long between the regulator and the power supply. They're not in this case, but I'm putting them in there for consistency. And of course, we have a capacitor at the output to eliminate any transients. So there's our 15 volt input, our common ground, and our five volt output. I have three meters hooked up and my DC load. And what I am going to do is change the load resistance from 100 ohms down to 25 ohms, maybe a little bit extra. And then I'll record all of the data. This is the input voltage. This is the input current and this is the output voltage. I'm using this in lieu of the screen here for accuracy purposes and of course we can just take our 100 ohms and divide it into the 5 volts and that'll give us the current assuming of course that that 100 ohm load is correct and I'm going to trust that it is. Once I get done with the 7805 I'll put the 78E5 into the circuit and repeat the procedure and calculate the efficiencies of each and then we'll take a look at those. I've now inserted the 78E5 into the circuit and we will repeat all of those values using that component. The last check wasn't really fair because we know that if we have a 7805 with a 15 volt input, 10 volts has to be dropped on that pass device. So that is a large voltage drop. So now let's check it again, but this time go at just the minimum voltage needed to keep the circuit operating and regulating properly. So I've got the 7805 on the circuit first, and I've got everything hooked up, and you can see that I have seven volts in now and we're at quiescent current we have no input or no load on the circuit at all and it's using 3.4 milliamps and the voltage is 4.99 out so let's repeat all of the values that we just did for the 7805 
and then I will change it to the 78E5. And for the 78E5, I'll have to increase this voltage to 8 volts because it needs to be 3 volts above the regulating value. Right now we're looking at the output of our 78E5, the pulse width modulated circuit. It has a 50 ohm load on it and we want to see if the ripple is going to be less than the 120 millivolts peak that we had in the data sheet. So we do have two and a half volts. Here's our reference. Our channel one reference is zero and so two and a half division. So there's the five volts. So that looks good. Now let's take a look at the actual ripple by changing our circuit to AC coupling. And we're going to increase the sensitivity until we can actually get a signal. So we're at 20 millivolts per division. And I'll try to get a few more repetitions in there and do a single shot so we can actually see the the frequency of the signal that's coming out and you can see the repetition is from this point to this point before it starts again so that should give us our our frequency which is in the 300 kilohertz range so if I adjust my cursors to the right spots and there we go and it's telling us it's 299.4 K Hertz so that's good we're supposed to have 120 millivolts of ripple or less and we'll check that out now and we'll actually use the peak so that point to looks like I hit it one too many times there we go and the delta on that is only 63.2 millivolts so that the ripple right now is half of the maximum that we should have so that looks pretty good too Let's take a look at the results from our testing of the two circuits. Well, here are the results for our test, and it wasn't a particularly fair test at this point because we have 15 volts in on a linear regulator and only 5 volts out, and any voltage above V out is essentially wasted internally. The currents between in and out should be roughly the same, with the input current, of course, being a little bit higher, there's always going to be the quiescent current, and it's about 3, 4, or 4 milliamps on a 7805. The best efficiency we got was at 25 ohms, and it was only 32.95%. As you would expect on a pulse width modulated circuit, we got much greater efficiency because any excess voltage, it really didn't matter to the circuit. It wasn't going to turn on and apply it to the output because it would be greater than our V out. We got efficiencies on the order of 86%, 85%. So probably uh, if we average this, it'd be just around 84% efficiency, 83%. So much more efficient than our poor old linear regulator. Now when we take the voltage and adjust it to dropout. So for a 5 volt regulator, 7805, the dropout is 2 volts greater than V out. So I put 7 volts into each of these and measured the, the current and the power just as we did on the previous one. And in this case you can see that the efficiency went way up 69.9%, 67.24, all the way up to 70.8% at this measurement. However, when we got to the 10 ohms and tried to get our 5 volts out, we actually were at the dropout point for the regulator because of all the current and probably, well, it's, a, it's only a slight drop below its 7 volts. You wouldn't expect it to be that sensitive, but the combination of the current demand and the, and the tiny little voltage drop, I wouldn't expect this to make much of a difference. But we did end up with the output essentially being dropped out, i.e. no longer regulated. I was getting something on the order of 4.2 or 4.3 volts. And as I tweaked the resistance up a little bit, it came back in right around 25 ohms or 22 ohms.
So we did manage to get to the dropout voltage when we went to 10 ohms. I never had the same problem with the 7085. It worked all the way down to 10 ohms. The voltage did drop a little bit, 7.97, and the efficiencies were really good, and we approached those efficiencies on the data sheet when we got down to 50 ohms and 25 ohms. It was about 89.5% efficient. So overall, you can see the efficiency on these little puts with modulated voltage regulators is a lot better than the 7085s. The biggest problem I see with those is that the pins are a although they're pin for pin compatible they're a little bit wider and this would make fitting them into the board a little bit more difficult unless you're designing the board yourself for breadboarding it makes it tough you're gonna have to solder on some pins as I did on on this one but it worked really great once I got it in there and again best part it had no extra components required to work with it no capacitor at the input or the output so it took up a little bit less space and I could just plop this thing right into the board just make a little wire connection between my 24 volts in and I got my 12 volts out just as I had expected so worked a lot better than the old 78 series of components and, and you would expect that technology moves on right well thank you again for watching the channel and joining me on this video I hope to start the last sections of the FM radio fairly soon. So we'll talk about the mixer and the oscillators and such and get those tuned up and working. And I've got a few other ideas for things that I like to discuss. Optocouplers were among those choices. So again, thanks for watching and until next time, take care.